the Hang Seng, sitting with cuts of six tenths of a percent. CPI has peaked, inflation's peaked. We, we're pretty confident it's going to come down pretty hard next year. I think clearly we are seeing a situation that people will consider debt and SIP both and that will be the change which we'll see in 2023. Deeper fertilizers, they have actually announced a demerger of their mining and fertilizer business so that definitely is a big one. It's actually a good uh, trade deficit number after a long gap and what is good is that there is a bit of a recovery in exports. By means of a consent award, uh, it means that both the parties, MCL and ZESCO, got onto the table, uh, agreed on bilateral terms, uh, how the debt will be disposed of over the next course. 0.5%, lower by 83 points, slightly worse than what the SJX50 was suggesting. I think uh, India will face some kind of uh, headwinds when the world looks at China opening up. The World Economic Forum telling us that there shall be 140 million middle-income households added to India's economy by 2030. Fordler intends to sell about 29.88% equity in the company. For crude oil, windfall tax has been cut to 1,700 rupees per ton versus 4,900 rupees per ton. Well, that was the day so far. You're with us here on Closing Bell. I'm Prashant with me, my colleagues, Nigel and Reema. Uh, you know, guys, uh, at least for me, every time I looked up at the screen today, the market had moved 100 points. Uh, you know, it was basically 100 points away from wherever it was last. Uh, and I think uh, it just, the graph tells you the story. Uh, in aggregate, I mean, you know, close to last close to where we are now, now it's 100 points. But uh, in aggregate, the market has basically uh, mo uh, moved about, uh, traveled about 700 points. Uh, that's the picture. You know, you got a 140-point dip. There was a 150-point up move. The market briefly in the green. There was a sell-off of 172 points. Uh, then there was an up move of 140 points. And now the latest selling uh, is uh, worth 100 points once again. So uh, 700 in total, uh, that's, got to, uh, that's got to count for some uh, something. You know, uh, the point is there are two levels, right? I mean, the downside, the big level really, and I wouldn't even call it a big level. The medium-term level to watch is 18,133. Uh, that is the November low, uh, but uh, you've got the 20-day uh, on the upside, which stands at about 18,530. The 20 is closer than the November low, so let's, let's see which comes first. But for now, uh, volatility, name of the game, continues, and, uh, you know, uh, bounces are getting sold into, but uh, dips uh, are not uh, going beyond a point as well. Uh, Nigel, hi. Hey, sir. You know, earlier this morning, I made this point that I'll be rather cautious, you know, because the way that the Nifty did correct yesterday and we ended virtually at the low point of the day. So I was feeling a little bit cautious after quite a few days. And, you know, it seems that has played out because we're seeing pullbacks at one point of time. It looked like the Nifty was going to move into the green as well. But that's got sold into. I'll tell you what, you'll get more constructive on the index if we can get past the 20 DMA and hold above those levels. Till then, I think we could visit lower levels. And just look at the options data. The 18,400 call, the 18,500 call, well, they are being written very, very aggressively. Even in today's trading session, there's a massive surge in terms of open interest. So at higher levels, you're going to see supply. On the downside, though, there is some mixed action that's taking place at around that 18,300 put. The premium out there is around 90 rupees. So there were some buyers earlier today, but then now you get a sense that there is some writing as well, which tells you the 18,200 mark becomes the first level. You know, the bulls would like to defend that. For the time being, though, sell on bounce is what's been taking place. And that's both on the Nifty and the Nifty Bank from the morning session itself. I don't know whether we, the bulls have a fight back in the last 60 minutes or so, but I'll be more convinced once we get past the 20th DMA. Reema? Well, right now, at least, the Dow Futures is suggesting a lower start, so down more than 200 points in the Dow Futures. Uh, to be precise, it's actually down close to 280 points as we speak right now. So it suggests there is no let up, at least in terms of selling when it comes to the U.S. markets. And European markets, too, are roughly lower, about half a percent, going up to one percent. For our markets, we're at the low point of the day. The Nifty is virtually below that 18,300 mark, a cut of close to about 0.6 percent. Let's tell you what we've lined up on closing bell today, then. Sugar stocks in a sweet spot as raw sugar prices near a five-year high. A quick explainer on what's driving the prices higher coming up on the show. Polycab is losing in trade. The stock is down 6 percent. What's dragging the stock lower? Details coming up. Nava Limited in focus as its subsidiary MCL reaches an agreement with Zesco to clear a long-standing arrear 
dispute, uh, the company will be netting in close to about more than $500 million by August 2023. Key excerpts from our conversation coming up on the show. We'll discuss the way forward for the markets with Mithun Aswat of Kiva Advisors. And it's Friday and Avatar, the way of water, is hitting the theatres and is already seeing very strong bookings across theatres. What could this mean for multiplexers? A quick explainer coming up later on in the show. All this and much more on this Friday Closing Bell. Okay, so uh, that's the lineup here. But uh, what should you be doing in the last hour of trade? Mitesh is with us. Uh, Mitesh, hi. Uh, absolutely a volatile zigzag day. Uh, but uh, the closing is at the end, of the end of the day is what will matter. Uh, what are the trades to take? Your opinion. Uh, Mitesh, I think you'll have to unmute yourself. Yeah, the other point which is important is that, uh, you know, uh, I said that the texture of the market will change with the fall which we've seen for the last few days. So now it's not a buy on dips kind of market. It's kind of mildly, you know, sell on rallies. And we have been shorting more on the stock side. But the index closing below 18,300, I think, should call for more declines. In the worst case scenario, levels of 18,150, 18,000 could be tested as well. So uh, I think it will be choppy, but uh, with some kind of negative bias. And on the stock side, uh, Naveen Florin is something which has uh, broken down. It's making a fresh swing low. So that's a sell. Uh, keep a stop above levels of uh, 4,205 and look for targets of around 4,000, 4,020. While India Cement is also on the sell side. Uh, that's a sell with the stock at about levels of uh, 235 half and a target of around 220 on the last set. Okay. All right. Uh, noted that, Mitesh. We'll come back to you. Well, for the time being, the market has taken a harder knock. Uh, we're down below the 18,300-odd mark. And a couple of stocks are dragging. Adani Ports has moved to the low point of the day. A couple of these Adani names, actually. Adani Ports, Adani Enterprises, plop in today's chart out there. But big boy, Infosys, that's taken a leg down. The stock was almost in the green, actually, just around 30 minutes or so ago. Now it's down close to 100%, but the bulk of that fall has come in the last few minutes, and that's the one that's dragging the index. But let's talk about the broader markets. Polycab, well, that was the start of the last few days. However, in today's trading session, it's losing in trade. Bahista is joining in to tell us the reasons behind that fall. Bahista? Hi, Nigel. Well, BNK Securities had a management meet uh, with, with the Polycap management and the key takeaways from the meeting were that the company expects 1.5 times market growth in core segments. Uh, the company is expected to grow at a double the market growth rate in the emerging segments. The company also expects to exceed 12% EBITDA margins in the FMEG segment and there will be greater focus on switch gears which has a contribution margin presently at 40-45% to 45%, which can increase all the way to 50-55%. to 55%. In fact, even in the cables and the wire segment, the demand environment remains strong with an uptick in the private sector capex and real estate upcycle. BNK Security says that the current valuations leave limited scope for the upside and the stock has already rallied by about 7% in the past one month and 30% in the past six months. But the stock is in red today, making new lows of about 6-7%. So uh, BNK Securities has downgraded the stock to hold from a buy rating and the target price is at 3096 rupees the stock is currently trading at 33 times its fi24 earnings all right uh, fair enough thanks very much uh, Vajita, uh, for that uh, that's uh, polycab which is down sharply uh, let's uh, get uh, prakash divan into the chat uh, and ask him what he's making of the market uh, as well as polycab prakash hi uh, you want to comment on the market mitesh was saying perhaps the texture is changing a bit you know, uh, don't look at buying every dip, maybe the big one, if there is one. Uh, any thoughts there? And then, uh, I mean, if you have a view uh, on Polycab, which has done very well and seeing some profit booking today. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, Prashant. Oh, I, I do agree uh, with Mitesh's comment uh, that, you know, the market is looking a bit skittish. Uh, you know, I mean, you really don't know what kind of a trigger the market will use or grab at uh, in terms of this correction uh, that comes back, you know, the, the activity on the screen very clearly tells you uh, that this mid cap small caps are losing a little bit of momentum and and selectively even you know the large cap is seeing a very quick very sharp uh, rotation within uh, the nifty itself you know and Prashant, the best part is uh, we are we are looking at a valuation uh, matrix where all the good price uh, all the good uh, news is priced in fairly well uh, and that's that's the case after the results were over for the q2 and Q3 may not be as promising as, uh, you know, what Q2 probably lulled us into believing. Uh, 
So that's that's where you know I think come Jan and uh, middle of Jan and probably end of Jan, where you know things could start looking very different. And that's the time to you know start looking at your favorites to add on or to kind of kind of uh, build your portfolio, reset your portfolio. At this point, I think profit booking will probably happen. And and the institutional money is not in a hurry to buy into a lot of the mid cap, small caps. It's very evident. So wait for that. On polycap, I think uh, it's it's very simple. This was a great company. Uh, was available at decent market cap when it started off, uh, but in the last three years, it's it's kind of grown to this forty thousand crores plus mark. Uh, and and I do agree that the valuations uh, at thirty four times five twenty four and thirty seven times trailing. Could probably leave with very little room for uh, uh, you know any upside. In fact, the the challenge here is that all the other companies in that space have started kind of following a model which is very similar to Polycap in terms of distribution strength and branding rather than just just product salience. So once that happens, their competitive intensity will also you know bring down the premiums that are attached to some of these leadership uh, names. So I would I would uh, definitely recommend that you could book profits at this point. Wait for maybe not just lower valuation, but get into something else at some point in time. Okay. Uh, hi, uh, Prakash. Uh, afternoon. Just stay on. We want to talk about sugar as well because across the board, you're seeing some big gains in sugar names in a sweet spot as raw sugar prices are at a five-year high. Manisha is here with details on what's driving these prices higher. Manisha. Thank you for that, Rima. Well, yes, we've seen the raw sugar prices run to a five-year highs. And when you look at this year as well, it has been a strong gain that you've seen in raw sugar rather than the white sugar in the international markets. There are a couple of reasons for this. One, as I said, the markets are tight. Two, India also is looking at some weather concerns here. So the final crop number is something that many people are still debating on. The third thing is that the food secretary, when he spoke yesterday, so spoke about two things. One, that uh, the sugar in India should be more refined and there should be more speciality sugar that we should be looking at. So clearly raw sugar, which is already at, uh, uh, you know, uh, at a discount or rather in a shortage, could be looking at more of that trend. And the second thing he said was that the export quota extension should only be seen in the month of January. Also, of the 6 million tons of sugar quota that has been allowed by the government, only 1 million ton has been exported. And in the international markets as well, Brazil is still between harvest. Thailand, the other major producer, also is looking at lower crop because of adverse weather. And Europe also is looking at a lower crop and they would be importing into the international markets as well. So internationally, there is a big shortage and that's exactly where the price run is coming in from. Thank you very much for that, Manisha. Prakash, any favorites in the sugar space? Yes, Rima, I think uh, my favorite continues to be Balrampur. I would, you know, when, when a sector is getting advantages and the headwinds are going to be favorable because of this complex uh, situation, uh, you, you always find the leaders to benefit much bigger in a much bigger way and much earlier. You know, so it's as simple. The smaller ones on the tail will also benefit, but it will take time. If you really want to play it safe, I think Balrampur is just begin its run. Um, and, and, and my sense is, uh, what, uh, based on what Marisha said, and, you know, if you extrapolate a trend in, in uh, sugar prices, it typically lasts for 12 to 18 months. So till, you know, crushing season of 23 and then beyond that, I don't think there's any let up in terms of the, the demand or the pricing, uh, uh, favorable pricing that's available. And the last thing that's helping these bigger players, Rima, is they've got money coming in from all activities, whether it's raw sugar, whether it's ethanol, whether it's export quotas. I mean, you could trade that if you really didn't want to export yourself. And all of that is with a balance sheet that's much more leaner. Um, you know, so for example, Balrampur, which used to carry such a huge debt burden of close to about 40 to 100 crores, is now probably, you know, in, in, in double digits. So that's that's the kind of change that's happened. And I, I think you can't miss out on, on growth when you're looking at uh, something like this. So definitely Balrampur could stand out as one of the best picks in this uh, space. All right, uh, Prakash, what about this seasonally uh, strong quarter? It should be United Spirits, right? The stock is down close to around 4%, uh, around 900 rupees odd. What's your view on the stock? I'm extremely bullish on United Spirits, Nigel, for uh, uh, more, more secular reasons than just the seasonal ones. But I'm, I'm quite intrigued at the fact that it's corrected uh, uh, significantly in today's trading session. But the way it has moved in the last, let's say, about a year, 15 months from that 600 neighborhood to... 900 plus it is on the back of a lot of anticipation uh, on improvement in its balance sheet and we know the reasons why that's happening but the true benefit of scaling up this business for diageo is is actually now around the corner and i, I you'll be surprised i mean the targets that i can look at 
uh, on on my modeling of uh, United Spirits business is is probably close to two thousand bucks. I mean, which is a far cry from where it is right now. But I think in the next eighteen to twenty four months, you'll probably see this as a big outperformer. So yeah, a lot of a uh, lot of hopes riding on that. And and it will probably deliver from this level for sure. So keep a watch on on the kind of triggers that uh, lead to scaling up, and that will be the single biggest factor to re-rate this stock. All right, uh, we'll take a quick break here. Uh, Prakash, stay with us. We'll come back and uh, discuss the way forward. Mithun Ashworth of uh, Kiva Advisors will also join in on the other side. Stay with us. Welcome back. A stock which is on our radar is Nava Limited. It was earlier known as Nav Bharat Ventures. Now, its subsidiary, MCL, has reached an agreement with Zesco uh, and they've resolved a long-standing dispute, an arrears dispute. We had a chat with the CFO of the company who indicated that the company will get a little more than $500 million, which will come into the company in tranches by August 2023. There is no chance this is going to be litigated further because the two companies have sat across the table and come to this agreement in terms of compensation of this $500 million that the company will receive. $70 million will be used to pay VAT. About a little more than $200 million will be used to pay some outstanding principal, but the balance is available with the company to spend. The stock has pretty much gotten re-rated. Yesterday, it was up 8.5% and it's followed it up with a 9.5% gain. Listen in to an excerpt from the conversation that we had with the CFO of Nava Limited. This is a consent award issued by the International Arbitration Tribunal based in London, uh, not in Singapore. Uh, by means of a consent award, uh, it means that both the parties, MCL and Zesco, got onto the table, uh, agreed on bilateral terms, uh, how the debt will be disposed of over the next course, and approached the tribunal to issue a consent award. So it cannot be challenged further because the parties bilaterally agreed and reached the agreement and which the tribunal issued in the form of an award. As per the settlement agreement, it will come in tranches, and uh, Zesco has agreed that the entire money will be settled to us by end of uh, August 2023. Out of the 518 million, about uh, 70 million will go for, towards the payment of VAT liabilities to the government of Zambia, uh, which we believe that uh, Zesco will directly uh, pay off to the ZRA. And the, from the balance for 47 million, uh, we have an outstanding principal due to the lenders, which uh, has not been paid since about three years. So over $220 million uh, would go for the repayment of the outstanding uh, overdue principal amounts to the lenders. Balance amount is uh, available with the company uh, and the board will take a suitable decision when the right time comes uh, for the utilization of the funds, either in terms of the payout to sponsors or uh, conserving cash for further expansion. Okay, all right. Uh, Prakash, I'm not sure whether you tracked this one, but I recall a few years ago, everyone was so bullish on the Zambia product, uh, project. Yeah. And people believe there was not much of a risk. Well, then things turned around drastically, but now they're confident they're going to be getting this money, $500 million odd. Uh, what's your view on the stock from year on? It's given you a return of 15 to 18% in just two sessions. Done or more to go? Uh, I'm not sure, uh, Nigel. You know, it's, it's still, it's still uh, the execution that is missing in this uh, case. And, and this is more like a respite that you have because a very long-standing dispute probably comes to an end. But, you know, the biggest challenge with this uh, with this business was the complexity. I mean, the sum of parts was so confusing because it was into virtually everything that was doing well at some point in time, whether it was paper, steel, cement, you know. So it, that, that makes it still very complex. And I think you'll have to watch for the capital allocation for this money that's coming in. How does this actually help uh, pad up the balance sheet and, and which P&L section that will move to for lines of business get actually nurtured by this kind of capital. So I, I would I would not be in a hurry. I know I you missed out on this, but this was a news flow or news driven uh, move that you saw, which you can never get right. But from a long term perspective, fundamental driven this thing view, I think I think you'll have to give it some time. Okay, uh, that's uh, the view coming in on Nava Limited. Uh, by the way, for the markets, it's still trading below that 18,300 mark, so there is no respite at the low point. Uh, Prakash, another big uh, mover today has been GMM Fodler. It's down close to about 15%. We knew that there was this large promoter stake sale, a block 
of nearly 30% stake, which was expected. But one would have thought, right, that they would have got some buyers um, on the other side of this large transaction because the stock price at 1646 is currently trading below the floor price of 1700. What have you made of this transaction and the fact that the promoter entity, uh, you know, is selling such a big amount? Yeah, Rima. So, you know, I mean, I, this is a well-discovered stock and we have some marquee uh, investors who, who probably uh, understand the stock very well. And I'm sure there'll be a better place to tell us about it. But I can look at it from an objective perspective. Um, promoters selling out a significant stake, which is, which is almost like, you know, uh, the skin in the game comes down to a very significantly low level. The second thing is uh, the industry is no more at the cusp of growth that we saw when, you know, when, when India was uh, uh, getting benefited by that China plus one in the chemical sector. If you talk about the order book, if you talk about realization, rising power, all of that probably is peaked out and is behind us. Uh, the way there's so much of softness in global exports uh, and, and especially Europe crumbling down on, on the appetite that you have for some of these equipment. So overall, when you see, uh, I don't think the business is in that stage where you would probably be uh, able to get great returns from here on. In fact, you'll have to give it enough time to recover uh, in, in, in terms of the operational efficiencies and uh, scaling up. So that's probably the reason why uh, such a huge overhang, such a huge supply will, will have an impact because there are not going to be many takers at this point in time for this uh, business. Okay, that's GMM Fordler with a big cut today, 14% lower. Prakash, thank you very much for your time. Good speaking with you. Appreciate it. Mithun Ashwath is now joining us, managing partner at Kiva Advisors. Mithun, uh, good to have you with us uh, today. Uh, many uh, believe that, you know, uh, the path ahead as we enter 2023 is again getting a little muddled. It's not very clear. And the big problem for equity markets is going to be that growth will come off uh, quite sharply. I mean, actually, even in India's case, I was listening to Manish Dangi, who used to head debt at Aditya Birla, uh, sort of uh, a mutual fund. He was the CIO for debt, uh, who said that, uh, you know, in FY24, growth uh, perhaps uh, will be... 5% uh, or less. Uh, now, that is still a big number because the rest of the world perhaps is in uh, negative uh, territory. Uh, but uh, given as it is with valuations where they are, is it looking a little more tricky now? Yeah, good afternoon, Prashant. Uh, I think uh, obviously, you know, markets uh, have rallied quite a bit uh, despite, you know, global turbulence and uh, corrections can be expected. Uh, considering, you know, the Fed continues to, uh, uh, you know, raise interest rates and continues to remain in terms of a cautious or a hawkish stance. However, if you uh, look a little bit further, I think the bond market, at least in the U.S., seems not to be uh, uh, discounting that there will be further rate hikes. Um, uh, interestingly, you know, the 10-year bond yield uh, has come down uh, uh, over the last couple of months. It has not gone higher in the U.S., even, uh, for example, mortgage rates in the U.S. touched close to 7% a month ago are down to about 6.3% right now. So I think it's now the market versus the Fed. Uh, and uh, obviously, uh, you know, markets are a little disconcerted by, you know, the Fed mentioning that the terminal rate could be over 5%. And uh, so I think the focus now will move from maybe inflation to growth. And uh, the market is seeing this bout of correction even globally primarily trying to discount uh, a potential growth slowdown because of rates being high. So I think it's going to be a, a, a tussle between these two factors. Uh, coming to India, I think, you know, the RBI did one more rate hike and uh, we don't see maybe another 25 basis points and, and uh, we, we are through even in, in India. Um, so we actually see any, you know, uh, uh, declines uh, as opportunities to uh, get into the market because this market's also been quite narrow. It's been mainly the large caps which have led the market. There are several, uh, you know, mid caps and small caps which have not participated. And we actually think if inflation has starts to come down, uh, you could see consumption and also broad day. Okay, we've, uh, his line has uh, been a bit frozen, so we'll try and reconnect with him. Okay, Mithun? You were saying that uh, you believe inflation is near its peak and therefore once it starts coming down, it will drive consumption. Go ahead. Yeah, that's what I was just trying to say that, you know, uh, consumption has primarily been urban-led over the last uh, uh, 
uh, year or so, we think actually that could broad base as, uh, you know, uh, that part of the economy also uh, start to heal from the COVID uh, worries which were there. Uh, we are actually seeing sectors like, you know, uh, hospitality, construction, all pick up. And these are, uh, you know, sectors which employ these uh, uh, type of people. And uh, we could see some sort of improvement uh, in that space as well. Uh, Mithun, in hospitality, where you do see a favorable risk reward, what are the area segments that you are betting on? Yeah, I think I've mentioned this before. Uh, you know, uh, we like, uh, you know, the tourist operators. Uh, one of the companies that we hold uh, and a positive on is uh, uh, Thomas Cook. Uh, that is one company that we do like. Uh, we continue to see tailwinds there. Uh, you know, most of the domestic businesses that they operate in, beat the sterling holidays, uh, business is doing very well. Uh, we see outbound growth and inbound growth uh, maybe actually doing well over the next couple of quarters. And FY24 could be even better uh, with the visa issues globally also settling down. Okay, all right. Uh, hi, Mithun. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, Mithun, normally when you join in, you give us a few stocks that you like as well with uh, disclosures that should be up for you on the screen. I believe from the FNCG pack, you like two stocks, right? Marico as well as Tata Consumer. And the IT pack, you're looking at Explio Solutions. Tell us more. Yeah, hi, Nigel. Um, like I was mentioning, we do think, uh, you know, that broad basing of consumption could happen. And FNCG uh, as a sector has been lackluster. Uh, a company like Marico has faced uh, headwinds because of, uh, you know, edible oil prices going up. Uh, we actually see uh, most of these prices have come down now edible oil, wheat, as well as even uh, palm oil prices, as well as copra prices have come down. So that could benefit Marico in the second half. Uh, they have actually taken price cuts. So you will see volume growth uh, improve uh, for Marico. Uh, Tata Consumer is more a uh, longer term play for us. We think you know uh, it straddles across spaces, be it uh, tea, beverages. Uh, they're having a large play on the water side as well, potentially with an acquisition of Bislery. Uh, they also play the urban pockets uh, with brands like Soul Food as well as Starbucks. Uh, so we we think, you know, these two are very well placed uh, to take advantage of any momentum in the consumption picking up. Mm. Uh, Mithun, uh, construction act, uh, activity, right? I mean, but this is uh, not contractors. This is cement, real estate, etc. that you like. Or contractors themselves. Uh, not not necessarily. We've not played contractors. We typically try to buy building material companies, uh, be it cement or, uh, you know, other providers to the supply chain. Uh, one of the companies that we do like, uh, and we've held it for quite some time, is the sanitary wear company called Sarah Sanitary Wear. Uh, so these are some ideas we like in that space. Any stocks which you've recently exited? Because now it makes less sense, um, given where markets are or the valuations have become rich? Uh, nothing in the recent past that we've exited. I think the only stock we would have exited uh, from portfolios uh, over the last few months would be a company called Raymond, which we were positive on for quite some time. Uh, but the stock had rallied quite sharply, and that's why uh, you know, we've exited out from that stock. Okay. Uh, any, uh, what else? I mean, uh, will you be looking to do, Mithun? I mean, uh, we, uh, you know, I spoke with Narain recently uh, of uh, ICSA Pro, uh, who was telling us that uh, you know you should give yourself a little more flexibility and not be all in equity. Uh, mm -hmm. So he was uh, kind of pushing uh, the multi-asset fund. I mean, they run a couple of schemes in that category, which allows one to get exposure to uh, you know uh, debt, but many other things as well. Uh, you know, gold and. Uh, maybe real estate through invits, etc. Uh, for an equity fund, that is of course not an option. But how would you how would you, how would you navigate through? I mean, the idea is capital preservation, largely. That was what was coming from Narain. In an equity fund, how would you reflect that? Yeah, Prashant. Actually, we we do also manage uh, cl clients' uh, assets. We provide advice across assets, and uh, obviously, you know, with debt yields improving. We have uh, allocated even to, say, guilt index funds for clients on their debt portion. Uh, so uh, that's what we are doing on the uh, fixed income side of the uh, portfolios. And uh, we are positive on uh, some of these REITs as well. And we do have exposures in client portfolios. 
so obviously, uh, you know, these uh, guilt index funds are no brainers because uh, you get three, four years of indexation and post-tax returns are uh, much in ahead of, uh, say, a fixed deposit. Uh, Mithun, we'll leave this conversation today at that. Thank you very much for joining in. Have a lovely uh, weekend. For the market, um, a couple of stocks are seeing some selling pressure. So Reliance Industries has now given up all its gains. A couple of these FMCG names like Asian Paints is under pressure, Tata Consumer, Britannia on the way down. Aisha Motors too has given up all its uh, morning gains and now is absolutely flat. We'll get into a break. On the other side, as always, we'll get you a check on what dealing rooms are saying in our segment, D Street Chatter. continues you get a 20 30 point bounce back and that gets sold into and as we speak we're virtually at the low point of the day 140 points lower and the nifty bank as well is down closer around 300 points but it's a good time to get a better insight into what's going on in dealing rooms nimesh joins us nimesh what are you making of today's session well, friday you know, and markets are under pressure flows uh, kind of friday factor as well but i guess for second they're running the markets under pressure well yesterday there was a clarity that the the, the, sell, the, the selling was i mean the pressure was led by by fi selling today you know uh, it's difficult to say because there is a FTSE rebalancing there is sensex rebalancing mm. so those flows will also have an impact on the on the institutional data so but still looks like looking at the screen look at the way large caps have fallen Looks like there'll be a there'll be a bias towards negative from the FIs as well. So that's a, that's overall feedback. But I guess the most important level to watch uh, on a technical level is 18300. We're trying to struggle around those levels. You know, I think bulls will try to defend that particular level. If that's taken out, maybe another 200 points can swiftly go on the downside. That's the overall feedback from the technical guys. I guess uh, the bigger problem is not the Nifty, but the broader markets. The yes. broader markets have relatively underperformed in the last two days. Today also, you know, it's down 500 points, and that's where the bigger pain seems to be. And it looks like it's more of profit booking in the uh, in the sectors which have done well. Mm. Most of the stocks, like if you look at PSU bank stocks the, or the small private banks or the stocks which had actually outperformed in the in the in the recent past, they've seen a bit of reversal. So it looks like more of profit booking in that particular space. Uh, and as I said, you know, but difficult to say. But the FI flows looks like it'll be negative, but I guess the important level to watch will be 18300. I think that's what bulls will try to defend in today's trade. Okay, all right. So uh, that's about market setup. But Namesh always get us some exciting stocks. What are you picking up this time around? So a lot of in lot of interesting names today. So the first stock on my list today is uh, Suryodhya Small Finance Bank. Mm -hmm. There is a large block, uh, uh, almost for five percent equity changing hands, and since then uh, th there is a big uptick as well in that particular stock. I believe the promoter entity was selling in today's block, so the disclosure will be important, and some smart H and have bought uh, as well in in this block. So you know, we'll see if. If, the, if, the, if those names get disclosed in today's, today's block deal data, so that's the first one. The second stock is JMM Fodler. This is an interesting one, you know, a big block. Uh, again, the feedback is while, uh, while there, was a, there was a supposed block to be of almost 30 percent, but not, I think not everything was done in today's trade. So there is a bit of mystery as to why uh, some shares didn't got sold into. But uh, in terms of important clarification, I believe the, the Indian promoters, which is the Patel family, they participated on the buy side, so they, they've bought in today's block. And some large, long-only funds were also buyers in today's block. So again, in, in JBM Fodler, the disclosures will be very important in today's trade. The third stock is BSC Limited. Uh, it's only listed in NSE, but small uh, uptake into, in today's trade, large on the back of a small buy figure or, or a small buying interest from a leading FIS. So it looks like some bit of interest is back in BSC from larger institutions. And the last stock is PVR. Uh, uh, yesterday we saw a big, uh, big correction, 3 odd percent. It's bounced back in today's trade, but still trading in that very narrow range. But now there is a feedback that even in PVR, there could be a large block deal soon. Remember, in September, a uh, clutch, clutch of private equity investors sold 7.7% stake. So it's largely owned by private equity, so there is a risk of a large block coming in from a leading private equity, and hence that, could be, uh, that stock could be in focus, at least in the near term. Okay, Nimesh, thank you very much for that. We'll watch PVR very closely, and everything Nimesh has said on D Street Chat has pretty much come true with Sophia Foods and so many others, even GMM Fodler. So watch out for PVR, expectations of a large block. But let's um, invite Nidesh Thakkar once again. He's going to tell us what you can buy today or sell tomorrow. BTST trades coming through for the weekend. Nidesh? Uh, we've had sell calls on Lalpat Lab earlier. I think today it can be taken as a SGBT trade. trade is closing near the day's low. I would keep a stop at about 23.10 and a target of around 22.65, 22.64 Monday. And the other one, which is uh, from the financial name is Kotak Bank, I think. Uh, that's also STBT. Uh, keep a stop just about 1850. Look for targets of 1820, 1822.
Okay, all right. Uh, <clears throat> uh, thanks very much, Mitesh. We'll come uh, come back to you. There's what, uh, 22 minutes to go for the uh, market uh, closing, and uh, things are still under pressure. 155 lower. Now, a quick programming note: uh, our weekend special editors roundtable comes up at 4:30 p.m. today. Uh, a quick sneak preview of what are the themes in today's show. We will focus on Nifty's 20 20 day moving average break, uh, and we'll tell you whether this sets us up for a bigger fall. Basically. We'll go back in history and see what the market has done uh, in uh, on earlier occasion when this level has been uh, taken out. You know, S. Narain, uh, CIO of ICSA Pru, told us that uh, you must have de debt exposure in 2023. Now, it's not a subject we discuss very often. Focus is very much on equity. So we'll tell you uh, about the options on the debt mutual fund side which are available. As we enter 2023, we'll look at what's the correlation between valuations and nifty returns. Are valuations currently at levels which makes risk-reward excessively unfavorable and what does history tell us that's going to be another piece we will put out another theme today is uh, nifty pse index is it on the verge of a multi-decade breakout we'll get you a detailed explainer uh, on that also d street a uh, deal street is alive and kicking even as 2022 draws to a close what kind of what did the street like and what didn't uh, uh, please them in terms of big deals this week we'll get you a complete explainer uh, so don't forget to tune in uh, into CNBC TV 18 at 4.30 p.m. today. Okay, by the way, keep your eye on IT names as well. The Nifty IT index is down 1.5%. One of the big cues today will be Accenture, the global technology giant, reporting their numbers. They're, this is a company which gives you an annual guidance. And the question is, will it maintain its FI23 annual guidance of 8 to 11%? This guidance is extremely crucial in context that HCL Tech just last week indicated that in the current quarter, Q3 quarter, they have seen higher than expected furloughs in BFSI, in technology, in high tech. Is this going to be an industry-wide phenomena? What does Accenture have to say about Q3 furloughs, the possible impact on budgets? This will be, um, you know, this will set the tone for the IT companies as we enter into the Q3 earnings season in the beginning of, at the beginning of January. But guys, it's Friday and there is a big release hitting the theaters. Avatar, The Way of Water, sequel to the 2009 flick that has released today and it's seeing very strong bookings across theaters from what seems to be a very loyal fan base with over a million tickets sold across the country. Vaishta is joining in to tell us what this could mean for multiplexers. Vaishta? Hi, Reema. Well, absolutely right. Avatar, the, the way of water is the big release uh, coming up today. The bookings across theatres have been quite strong and the shows have scheduled even at odd timings like 2 a.m., 3.20 a.m., even at 6 a.m. The average ticket prices, at least in Mumbai, are anyways upwards of 300 rupees. Also, the film is expected to have a longer run time. So all these factors suggest a high box office collections from this particular movie. Now, according to a Mint article, this movie has already sold... 1 million tickets till date and may surpass the box office records of past blockbuster movies like Dangal, KGF, Chapter 2 and Avengers Endgame. Ilara Capital expects the lifetime collections from this particular movie to come in any, anywhere in the range of 500 to 600 crores, which is quite a huge number. Now let's deep dive into what has happened this year till date. The box office collections from the Bollywood have already crossed 3,000 crores uh, on a year-to-date basis, which is three times of the last calendar year, 2021. And we are already 60% of the pre-COVID levels, that is calendar year 2019. Well, the big, biggest movie release this year, as we know, has been RRR, which has crossed the box office collections and has been at approximately 300 crores. Other movies that crossed the 100 crore collections have been Brahmastra, The Kashmir Files, Drishyam 2, Bulbulaya 2, Gangubai Kathiawadi and Thor. And the release of Avatar in Q3 could well board for the PVR and Inox, uh, which are the multiplexes in the country. Let's look at some past trends. In Q2, PVR revenues were at approximately 650 crores and Inox was at 370 crores. So let's see if Avatar recreates its magic for the film exhibition business. Okay, is this the last hurrah that uh, the multiplex uh, companies won after what has been quite a challenging year for them? Uh, we also have Hemang Jani joining in to talk about individual stocks. Hemang, before we get to some other stocks that you are talk, you know, recommending, uh, any thoughts on multiplex uh, names like PVR as well as Inox? 
Uh, good afternoon, Rima. I think we've seen some uh, revival uh, in the sentiment uh, following the uh, box office uh, response to names like Grisham 2, Kantara, and with the Avtar uh, hitting the uh, theatres, there is definitely some excitement. Uh, but our take is that uh, uh, this entire space is going through a lot of disruption because of the uh, OTT uh, and, 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 and the fact that we didn't have a very strong pipeline of blockbuster movies. So I think uh, having seen a strong run-up uh, in the names like PBR, uh, you know, we think that it would make more sense to focus on some of the other uh, sectors where there is a slightly better, uh, you know, growth visibility with valuation comfort. I think uh, you might go through a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, uptick basis, the response to certain uh, movies, but uh, on an overall basis, I think this sector is not looking that encouraging given the disruption which is there. Absolutely, and there is, uh, uh, Nimesh was telling us earlier on D Street Chatter that there is perhaps a big block which uh, is uh, coming as well. Uh, so we will see. This windfall tax uh, cut, uh, uh, you know, today, of course, uh, stocks are down. I mean, ONGC is down a little bit, uh, Reliance is down a little bit, but this does provide some tailwind, especially for ONGC, doesn't it? Uh, because uh, essentially what the government is saying that till 75, 80, we are okay. Uh, but the ONGC stock is pricing actually closer to 40 than even $50 right now. Uh, what's your sense, uh, Himang? So clearly, uh, the uh, relief is there for the upstream companies like uh, ONGC, Oil India, uh, and to some extent Reliance. But we have to also reckon that for some of the companies, uh, you have, uh, you know, many other uh, businesses, uh, particularly, you know, the, the, the refining part, uh, and 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 that would have a lot of uh, variables attached to it because there is a sense that the GRMs will be capped for reliance, let's say, at about uh, 12 to $14 uh, per barrel. So we think that given this uh, intervention by the government, it would make more sense to focus on some of the city gas companies where the uh, relative uncertainty is less and you have a you know, good volume growth story with some uh, stability in the margin. So I think... Uh, Gujarat Gas or IGL are relatively better placed uh, in that space compared to ONGC or Reliance. Uh, pull up PI Industries. In the last one month, we've seen the stock rally from levels of 3200 all the way up to 3500. PI Industries, one month chart, and you would see the stock has been slowly trending higher. Himang, any stocks? Uh, any recommendations? Any thoughts? So very strong positive view on PI Industries and we had a recent uh, management uh, meeting with them and what is coming out from there is that more than uh, 40 products are at a different uh, development stage uh, and uh, there are almost about 15 uh, new inquiries in the first half and 25% are from the non-agri-chem uh, uh, space. Apart from that, the company is moving into pharma apart from this uh, agri-chem space which would provide uh, some additional revenue stream for them. So. We think that this is one of the few companies where, you know, you're more comfortable with the quality and the earning visibility both. Uh, so very strong positive view. Uh, you like tire names as well, Himang? Which ones? Uh, sorry, Prashant, uh, uh, I missed your... Uh, sorry, tire, tire stocks. Yes, so tire stocks, I think uh, overall, uh, you know, if you see uh, names like C8, uh, the, there is some sort of a cyclical recovery, uh, you know, and that would definitely board well uh, for some of the tire names. Uh, along with that, some of these companies have built in additional capacity and the raw material uh, prices have actually gone down. So we do think that uh, tire provides, uh, you know, good visibility for next couple of years with some improvement in the margin. So both C8 and Apollo tires are our preferred picks at this point. Okay. All right, uh, Himang, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much for your time. Good speaking with you. Uh, Thanks. And uh, we'll speak again. By the way, the market's pushing lower. We are at the low point of the day. Uh, it's not another 40, 50 points, but the point is we are kind of stuck there at the lower bound uh, at 18,265. Now, suddenly, this uh, the lows in November don't look that far, do they? 18,133 is the low in November. Uh, and uh, we are, I mean, still 150 points away, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, today, of course, there is a fair bit of uh, pressure. We'll uh, slip into a quick uh, break, but as we do that, here's some market opinion. I caught up with S. Narain, uh, Chief Investment Officer at ICICI Pro AMC. Uh, his thoughts on uh, asset allocation and way ahead for markets in 23. Listen in.
If you look at the last month, what we saw was that debt index fund right. have received huge inflows, and right. that's something which possibly as a product didn't exist two years back. So I think clearly we are seeing a situation that people will consider debt and SIP, right. both, right. and that will be the change which we'll see in 2023. I think the big call will be that inflation will become much smaller as an issue okay. in 2023. Okay. And therefore, we are in a situation where multi-assets become very interesting. Okay that you consider all the asset classes. Okay. You consider a product like multi-asset, which can invest in debt, equity, gold, right. silver, REIT, invet. Right. You can do everything. Right. Because I think that kind of an asset will become much, much more interesting because you're still going to have a volatile year ahead. So large caps became the area where bulk of the selling has happened this year. So large caps became the area where valuation comfort is there to a higher extent. Mid cap and small cap, the mutual fund industry ensured that there was continuous SIPs. Right. So that area has seen virtually no selling. Right. So those areas, the valuations are you, not you cheap. Are... See, you need some wave of selling okay. for the valuations to correct. Okay. And uh, there has been no wave of selling for years now. Right. So, and uh, retail was also positive. Right. So that's not an area where we have seen any selling. Right. Once you see selling the sectors, valuations correct. So that's why we prefer large caps over uh, mid caps and small caps. No, I actually told them you have to take tactically smaller positions right. and it helped us a lot. Right. If you look at it in the last one year, yeah. uh, the fact that, uh, you know, people, the old fogies like me ensured that we took smaller positions uh, helped us a lot because many of them corrected 50, 60 yeah. percent. Yeah. And uh, now we told them, look at everything with an open mind. And uh, if you look at it, some of those new age companies, we would have our highest ever position today after a 50% fall, not one year back. Evening, so I uh, catch that one. Uh, let's just quickly wrap up things. There's two minutes to go for close. And uh, we are, what, 150-odd points lower. Uh, 18,270 is where uh, we are at. And I think we'll end basically at the low point of the day, almost at the low point of the day. Uh, let's just look at the bank nifty as well. Uh, before we uh, sort of uh, wrap this up, the banks are, I mean, down about 0.6%. Uh, let's look at the mid-cap and the small-cap indices. Just the basic indices first. 1.6 lower on the mid-cap index. Uh, and I think we've got the small cap index down about 0.6% percent as well. Market breadth, by the way, is negative. Two is to one uh, in favor of uh, declines. Uh, so it's a all, not all, but uh, largely down kind of a day uh, that we had. I think sectoral indices uh, as well, I think all of them in the red, everything in the red. Uh, and the big losers are the PSU Bank Index, full 3% cut. Mid cap index down 1.6%. Uh, and you got the PSE index, which is uh, that's the CPSE index, which is down about one and a half percent. These are the big cuts. IT was down about one and a third of a percent as well. Prima. Well, you could see the cuts in the mid-cap PSU banks, Bank of Maharashtra, Central Bank, Union Bank, South Indian Bank, IOB across the board. Uh, cuts range between four to six odd percent. Uh, another big loser today was GMM Fordler, ends with a cut of close to about 15 percent. On the gaining side, Nava Limited was up nine percent, rallying hard for the second day in a row. The two sectors which were shining today, one is fertilizer with FACT locked in an upper circuit of 20%, but Madras Ferd, NFL rallying uh, double digit, and sugar as raw sugar prices hit a five year high. You had sweet gains coming in from Shakti Sugars, Mavana, Rana Sugar. All in all, there goes the bell. The Nifty ends with a cut of 140 points below the 18,300 mark. The Sensex down 380 points. It's a rough day of trade. There was lots of volatility, lots of swings on the way up and on the way down. But finally, we're ending with deepish cuts. 140 points lower on the Nifty, 18,274. The Sensex closing at 61,424, a knock of about 375, with the mid caps are underperforming. With that, it's a wrap and closing bell, but don't go anywhere. Our Friday special, Smart Money, comes up next.